As you can see here, the top and bottom terminal covers are hinged and easily snap open. Once open, you can see each terminal is labeled on the terminal covers itself. Now let's zoom in on the 1500's terminal block cover labels, starting with the bottom left. Here we can see the power terminals, and as this is an AC unit, we have terminals for L1, L2, and Earth ground. To the right of that, we have our first set of output terminals. This particular model is a relay output model, and these relays support either AC or DC. And you can see the first terminal is labeled O slash zero. This is the terminal for output zero. When your program commands output zero to close, the relay wire to these terminals will close and allow current to flow. Notice that output zero has its very own VAC VDC power terminal. This isolates it from all the other outputs. Now as we move to the right, we can see output one, two, and three all also have their own VAC VDC power terminals meaning each of those are isolated as well. Now as we move farther to the right, we'll see outputs four through seven, they all share a single power terminal. So those four outputs will all need to share a common power source. And as we move farther right, we can see that's also the case with outputs eight through 11. Now let's move to the top terminal block all the way over on the left, and we can see this micro has terminals to provide 400 milliamps of 24 volt DC power. This power source is often referred to as sensor power and should only be used with the input terminals. Now moving to the right, we see our first four inputs and they all share the same DC COM zero, which means they'll all need to be powered by the same power source. Now, if you're wiring this to dry contacts, like on a push button, that's not very hard to figure out. But if you're wiring the sensors with transistor outputs, you need to make sure all the transistors are of the same type. In other words, they're either all NPN transistors or PNP transistors. Now as we move farther to the right, we can see we have the same thing with inputs 4, 5, 6, and 7 as they all share COM1. And farther to the right, we can see inputs 8, 9, 10, and 11 all share COM2. The Micrologix 1500 also comes equipped with removable terminal blocks, and I'll remove one now to show you how they work. But I'm going to go ahead and speed up this part. Okay, now we see I've removed the terminal block, and you can see what the base looks like without the terminal block installed. You can also see here on the terminal block itself, each row of terminals has a clear finger safe plastic cover. And the screws that hold the terminal block on are captive, so they won't get lost. Now let's go ahead and reinstall the terminal block. Now, to make this easier on yourself, here's a tip. When you go to install the terminal block, only screw in the first side halfway. Then screw in the other side all the way, and then return to the first side and finish it off. The reason I say this is, if you try to screw in one side all the way, it's very hard to try to get the other side to go in because it's so crooked. Now we'll take a look at the bottom terminal block, and you can see it's just like the top, except it's larger. And that's it for our tour of the Micrologix 1500's terminal blocks.